guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Undefeated, y'all. I just had a lovely half an edible. I can say it's about maybe five milligrams, and uh, oh, I'm ready to bring you some entertainment. So let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Let's see. Oh, that. Okay. All right. You can go crazy down there if you're not down here if you're not careful. Uh-oh. A, a trim. Uh, it's been a while, but I'm sure I can handle it. Uh, we've got to put you under some anesthesia. D did you eat breakfast? I sigh. Nope. Good. My stomach growls as he goes on to explain how the trim works. I'm sure it's all just standard procedure. I had to get my antlers trimmed every once in a while growing up, and every now and and even more often now that I'm fighting. It's not too big of a deal during the winter, but I need one at least once a month for them for most of the year. I could just let them grow out, but then I'd have to give up fighting. I don't know what I'd do with myself without that. Besides, I couldn't put on most of the shirts I had if, I, if my antlers were growing out every which way. Don't look good in a button-up. The doctor's been rambling for a bit. I know the drill. Anesthesia injected into the scalp, bone saw cuts as close as the doctor can get it to the skin. Some of the fancier places topside have machines that do it a lot more efficiently, but those are expensive. The anesthesia alone costs more than more than most fur more, more than most fur cuts. Thankfully, the league pays for it down here. Though I guess that's why you don't see deer in the league often. I agree to whatever the doctor is saying, and he lays me back into the chair. A few seconds later, I feel the prick of the needle in my head. I close my eyes as the numbing feeling spreads over my face, my head, and face. Some time has passed. This feels. Fucking amazing. I don't know where they got this stuff, but it's so much better than where I usually get my trims. I groggily pulled my eyes open, but the light of the room is too damn bright. Probably doesn't probably doesn't hurt to close them for a bit more. I barely got any sleep last night. I deserve to get some rest. I've been training hard, too, so I definitely deserve it. Even Bucky said so, I think. Maybe? I don't remember what he said, actually. Was it, Was this morning a dream, too? He did say we were grappling today, but I don't know. I don't know if that was part of the dream or just me remembering. The schedule. The schedule he gave us yesterday. Shit. Wait. We have practice today. Shit. I need to get up like now. My eyes open and I sit up. It feels like my head weighs a hundred pounds or underwater. Hey, Doc. No one responds. You must have just left me here to nap. I gotta go. I gotta go train. Blinking feels heavenly. Like an extra bit of sleep in between this weird headache pulsing through my skull. I stand up off the bed, staggering toward the door. It's a miracle I'm even able to make it there. Everything is so damn cloudy. I make it to the hallway. There's not another person in sight. Maybe they're all tending to other patients. Whatever, I have to get to class. I stumble to the main hall and look around. It's eerily quiet. My legs are shaky without the walls to hold onto, so I try to get one. Ow! It's nice being on the floor, though. I can just close my eyes. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with you? Someone walks up beside me. I can't see him. It's kind of muffled, but I think I understand what he said. It's nice. You should try it. The floor, I mean. Uh, wait, shit, I need to get up. I need to go to practice. No, you're not. Come on. Whoever he is, he's got a nice voice, and he's really strong. So I'm going to pick me up like he is now. I can just fall asleep draped over his shoulder. He carries me to an elevator somewhere. It's nice and dark in here. You think Bucky will be mad if I miss class? The fuck should I know? It seemed like a good question. I don't want him mad at me. He gets mad when people call him Buck, but Redline does it anyway. He get mad when people call me Alex, so I get it. But, but Redline doesn't call me Alex. He pauses. Okay. I swear to Christ. Hmm. Elevator stops. I don't remember it starting, but it stopped, and now this big guy's carrying me down a hall. It's gonna be Bruce, isn't it? Which one is yours? My room. It's on the second floor. I know. Which one is it? It's at the end. Okay. It's not just mine, though. It's shared with Redline. Okay? He's really nice to me, even though I'm mean to him sometimes. Okay? I don't think he should be nice to me. Okay? Because then I wouldn't feel so bad. Jesus, I gotta get some of what they've gave you. You sound seriously fucked right now. I laugh, probably a bit too loud. It hurts my head. It's an Anastasia. Numbing, for, for my antlers. I prod at them. I can't feel my finger poke against them, but they don't hurt to the touch like they usually do after a trim. Hmm. So I can get them cut, but it's different this time. Alright, we're here, I think. He'd been nearing... I'd been nearing unconsciousness for so long that my body nearly crumbles when he sets me down. 
I fumble with the thumb padlock for a second and finally get inside. Didn't I have practice to go to? I think I need to go to class. No, you're going to sleep. You can't even walk. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. I stagger into the room and trip, falling flat onto a bed. Legs curl up and I drag the blanket over my body. Good night. He pauses for a minute. Yeah. I wonder who that was. The door closes and so do my eyes. Even though the sun is shining brightly through the windows, I somehow manage to pass out. Oh my god, who was that? I wake up to the sound of... Buttons clicking? I don't know how long I've been out. I don't even think I remember falling asleep. And definitely not on my own bed. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit! Sorry, did I wake you up? He whispers loudly enough for me to hear. I sit up in the bed. No, that's fine. You look too, you look too comfortable in my bed, so I didn't wake you up. Your bed? I blink a few times and shake myself awake. I'm definitely in Redline's bed. Mine is on the opposite side of the room. Covers neatly pulled over the mattress. S sorry. He taps a few more buttons on his controller. His laptop is propped open with some video game displayed. It's fine. It's fine, dude. You looked out of it. And judging by how much you talk in your sleep, it sounded like you needed the rest. I glare at him from behind. I talk in my sleep? Oh yeah, sometimes. Usually a bunch of nonsense, but it still means you're, you're restless, right? <sighs> I guess. I fish my phone out of my pocket. My head's still a bit dizzy from the meds. There's a text from a doctor and a few from Bucky. Doctor first. He applied some special gel to my antlers to keep them from growing back as fast. It says something about the anesthesia being extra intense when used with the gel. I guess someone told told him I was back in my room safe and sound. Redline, maybe? No, Redline was at practice, but I remember talking to or about him? The details are kind of fuzzy. My head hurts. I text back thanking the doctor, then swipe back to Bucky, expecting the worst. There's a text asking where I am. Another one hoping I'm alright and that he missed me in practice. I mean, it's nice as hell even if I don't deserve it. I was supposed to miss the class, but I did, and I feel kind of shitty about it. I have to apologize when I see him tomorrow. I'd go now, but it's already a late afternoon. I don't know where, I, where he'd be when classes are over. Redline huffs, shaking his controller a bit at, a bit at the game. You alright there? Hmm? Oh, yeah, no, I just dropped a combo. I'm a bit rusty still. Sitting up, I get a better look at his screen. Some kind of fighting game is rapidly playing out. There's some anime fox using your tails to rapidly stab her opponent. Some fat alligator man. That's pretty old. I stand up and stretch my torso out while Redline's screen flashes. Judging by the look on his face, I guess he won? He looks up at me. Wanna play? I've got a second controller. I'm gonna go for a walk, actually. Oh. Oh, okay, I'll come with you. I'd rather go alone. My phone buzzes with another text message. Please come to room 108 immediately. Well, that's ominous. Well, what's up? Apparently someone needs me down in room 108. What? Who? Unlisted number. Oh, dude, weigh in. Weigh in? He doesn't look away from his screen. Yeah, man, you know, like, it's like tradition, you know? Well, yeah, but I didn't think I'd have to do it with my whole situation. Yeah, it is kind of weird, but I think it's required, even for freak cases like this. I guess I have no choice. It's those office rooms by the med bay, right? Yep, I can walk you down if you want. I'm good. A quick sniff of my shirt and shoes to see if they reek from the nap, and I head out the door while Redline is still distracted by his game. It seems to be the place. There's a few people inside, so I go in. Um, it's dark in here. There's a camera crew off to one side, with a few people wandering around, setting something up. Against the back wall is a little stage, a few steps high, with all lights and cameras pointed on it. Bruce is up there, dressed up in his fight gear, tapping through his phone. Someone says something to him, and he grunts something back. Theodore, who I guess has been here the whole time, hops up to me with a little bag under his arm. Ah, it's good to see you, Alex. Are you well after your nap today? What is all this? I'm not going to ask how he knows about my nap. Word probably travels quickly down here. Theodore holds out the bag. Your gear is in here. Please change and get up on the scale. My pair of shorts and gloves are in here. I look back up at him, but then at the camera set up. And all this? It's up for promotional material, advertisements and all that. I furrow my brow. I thought I already took a bunch for ads way back when. Uh, before I even came down here. Yes, but the uh, championship fights, uh, they're special. I sigh. All right, is there a changing room? Hey, is that the kid? My ears twitch and I turn to face some guy behind the camera. Get changed and get up there. We've got more shit to get to. You want me to change in here in front of everyone? You think we haven't seen a dude in his shorts before? Get a move on. Wouldn't be as bad if I was wearing my briefs, but I put my jock early on early in preparation for class. Nobody else seems to be watching except Theodore, who looks really uncomfortable. It's not anything new, though. I can feel my face get hot as I slide my shirt off and shimmy my pants down quickly. I scramble to put my shorts on. When I look up, no one's even noticed. Okay, good. 
Theodore guides me up to the stage, which is two giant metal plates on the floor side by side. I guess these are the scales? Bruce is standing on one, idly staring at his phone. He turns his attention to me as I climb up the steps and flashes a smile. Didn't think you'd actually show up, Runt. We kind of thought you'd pussied out, right, guys? He lets out a laugh, and a few of the folks and a few of the folks' camera crew laughs along. I remain silent. Some people walk up to the front of the stage and fiddle a bit with a screen on the front. A display turns on the turns on at the back of the room, showing us what the cameras are recording. What? You got nothing to say? Nothing, nothing, nothing I say is going to make you stop talking. The man behind the camera pokes his head up. Bruce chuffs. I'm sure I can make you stop talking real quick, kid. You must think you're cute challenging me again. What? Challenging you? They assigned me to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep running your mouth. Just don't say anything stupid. He lowers his voice, growling those last few words. Oh, hello, thumbnail material. Hey, all right, guys. Hold still. Bruce is standing with one hand on his hip, the other arm pumping a bicep, chest proudly puffed out for the cameras. I sort of just sort of stand there, it's seething. A few seconds pass by, and the screens in front of our scales display a green check mark. Bruce flashes a grin and poses, flexing both biceps up by his head. At that moment, a bunch of digital cameras start clicking, capturing photos across the room. The guy behind the video camera clears his throat. He lifts his head over the camera and glares at me. I guess he wants me to pose too? I copy Bruce's pose. It's your first time, kid? You never posed for the cameras before? No. Yeah, don't worry about it too much. I'll make sure there'll be nothing left to pose with after this Saturday. Alright, and turn to face off. The dino turns to face me. I'm getting flashbacks to a month ago when we first met. His smile's a lot bigger this time around. He stands there for a minute while cameras click and take photos, simply glaring me down. Then he steps forward, bumping me with his chest. I try to stand my ground, but he takes another step and I'm forced to move backward. Ha 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 Ah, kid. He towers over me, nearly blocking out the light behind him. You're fucking dead, little man. Something inside me boils over and I shove my hands against his body. A gasp circles around the room and I see Bruce's expression go from happy to wildly jovial. Even I know putting hands on someone before the fight is a big no-no. I hop back, planting my foot awkwardly on one of the steps leading down from the stage. That seems to have been a good idea as Bruce was reaching out to grab me as I moved. My footing isn't easy, though, and in a split second I slip, falling back onto my ass with a heavy thud. Whatever Bruce had to say about my shove had been completely washed over by how loud he and the crew were laughing at me. Any rage had completely simmered down back to pure embarrassment. <laughs> Holy shit, kid! You sure you don't want someone in your own weight class? He starts flexing again, pacing on the stage as the cameras track him. Uh, Alex, are you... Theodore's hopped back to my side, trying to pull me up to my feet. He doesn't offer much resistance, but I managed to get back up. Are we done here? Can I go back to my room? The rabbit looks around. Sees, seems the crew is packing up and putting things away. Some making idle chat with Bruce. Y yes, you can head back. Cool. He sounded like he had more to say, but I don't want to wait around to hear it. I grab the bag that has my clothes, now neatly folded inside, and stomp back to my room. I march back inside, dropping face down onto my bed. Redline is still playing his game. He doesn't look away as I walk past. So, how'd it go? Mmm, sucked. I'm sorry to hear. Do you want me to go with you next time? How the hell would that help? No. Mmm. I lay silent, rolling over to face the ceiling, listening to the sounds of Redline's video game. After a while, he closes the laptop. I'm gonna go grab dinner with the guys. You should come with. It'll be fun. Might hit up the pool later. Maybe swing by the beach for some drinks? I'll pass. There's a bit of a pause. Are you sure? It might help you get your mind off things. Nah, go ahead. Well, if you say so, I'll save a seat for you, okay? I hear him shuffle around a bit before leaving. This all just feels like a bad dream. But if more so, my sore ass is any proof, I'm wide awake. The fight is in three days. What am I supposed to do if I can't even move him? Bucky's voice rings in my head. Full confidence, Xander. Whenever you doubt yourself, you gotta make yourself be confident. Even if it ain't real. Fake it till you make it, that sort of thing. And you keep that confidence until it becomes real, you understand? If you doubt yourself, you lose focus. You lose focus, you take a hit. It all snowballs until you end up eating the canvas. So I'll ask you now. You're fighting Bruce. Are you gonna win? I breathe in for a heavy sigh. My chest quakes like I'm about to cry. Oh, what a rhyme. I feel like I should cry, actually. My body doesn't seem to make it want to come, though. I have no choice but to get back up and fight. I have no choice. You all set? As I'll ever be, it's fight night. Can't say I'm exactly confident in what's about to happen, but there's no turning back now.
In the hallway toward the immersion chamber, there's a few doors off to either side that branch off. Inside each is a sizable room with a few screens, loads of seating, and a staircase leading down. The staircase is reserved for fighters and some VIPs. Pretty much anyone the fighter allows to follow them down to prepare for the fight. Take the staircase down through a few hallways leading to an elevator, and that takes you down to the main area. The main arena. It can be a bit of a maze, but it helps isolate the fighters. Everyone else stays behind to watch the fight on the TVs. The doors to the staircase stay locked until the fight is over. There actually is an alter alternate entrance through the med bay, but they'd rather be freed to... They'd rather that be freed up for fighters that need it. Bucky and I went down early to avoid the rush, and hopefully to keep, help calm my nerves. It's not really helping. But I guess it's better than getting heckled by the rest of the guys. His hands are massaging my shoulders as we stand in front of the elevator, waiting for the attendant to take me down. You're gonna do great. He's practically whispering in my ear. I think he can tell how nervous I am. At least my shaking arms are giving it away. You know the plan? Yes. We spent the last few days figuring out an effective strategy for handling Bruce. It worked in practice, at least on the guys available to us in my class, but still. There's no telling if it'll work on him. Hey! His hand covers mine, gripping it tight. He kneels down, staring into my eyes. You're shaking. Listen to me, Xanda. Even if this doesn't work out, we'll find a way. He's speaking softly, tenderly, the low timber resonating up through my arm into my chest. If it gets too dangerous out there, tap out. I take a shaky breath. It's hard to look him in the eye. We can't train you up to we can't we can't train you up to beat this if you let yourself get broken too badly, okay? Obviously you won't get beat, right? He claps my shoulder and smiles warmly. Bruce plays by the rules, but sometimes he can get a little careless. If he gets too scary, if you feel like you're in serious danger, tap out. Or recoup and find another way, alright? I never like tapping out. Not that I needed too often, but even still It always just felt like quitting. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. It seems like the next video is gonna be the next is gonna be the second big fight. Oh, I wish them all the luck in the world. Anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.